I was here in the mid 70s and um, and Chicago was really instrumental in informing who I have become uh, mostly for good I came here to study literature and to to know all the great writers and to probably I thought at the time uh, you know continue with that I had a core group of friends that were students here who seemed to have a deeper level of commitment and intensity and connection with uh, with uh, literature I, I loved it they loved it even more and it wasn't some sort of great magnanimous thing where I said I'm not staying here I just knew that I wasn't I wasn't supposed to stay here it was time for me to move on I think if you speak to most people, their, their, store, their, their charts go like this, up and down and all around. When I got out to California, I had a number of crazy jobs. I was working at the placement center at UCLA as a typist, and uh, a job order came in for a production assistant. I wasn't the only one that had it, but I got myself an interview, and I met Warren. He liked me, and he called me back the next day. And why did he like you? Um, well, I went to Chicago. That's what I was looking for. He went to Northwestern. He said, pack your bags the, that week we're going to go to San Francisco, Palo Alto, and spend the next year making Heaven Can Wait. Um, and that was my serendipitous intro to the movie business. Uh, you know, during that year, I got a behind-the-scenes behind the look at a major motion picture being made with very big movie stars. I felt like if there's a way for me to find my footing in this business, which piece of this do I want to be? Well, what an unbelievable way to make a living being creative and having fun. I never really saw myself as an incredibly talented writer, but I did write a screenplay and people were responding and this young agent said, I want to represent you and take it around town and get you noticed. I thought that was unbelievably great. Wow, I'm a talented person too. This is great news. And for the next eight years, I made a marginal living as a Hollywood screenwriter. But what I was feeling as those years progressed was that I had, I wasn't peaking. I was, it wasn't happening. And what came out of that was me being able to say, I went to Chicago, I've always been to my own mind, very strong with critical analysis, and there's no reason why I can't be really good at your material. And that's when my real journey began as a studio executive. I met the guys at, uh, at Universal, and they hired me as a very junior, the most junior guy of 17 executives. And within seven years, I was president. No, I didn't become a different person at all. I stayed, uh, again, the creative aspect of even when I became a, a devel development person in Hollywood and a junior executive reading other people's scripts, that was all critical analysis. That was being me being able to read something and articulately conveying how to make it better, how to make it work on screen, and how to get actors to want to be in the movie. And I was proud of that run, and I enjoyed it, and it really hammered home my career. And at 40 years old, it was time for me to then make my own films. And, uh, and that's what I've been doing since. Why do I go on? I go on because A, it's my job. Uh, B, I enjoy it. And C, I believe that there are stories that I still want to tell, and I hope that I get a chance to. What, what I look for with people is, is somebody who can harvest an idea and show me something inside a story that I may not see. That kind of incisiveness I find very attractive and I, I want that. I, I love being surrounded by people who, who have ideas and who are creative and who you know, open up doors that I have not been able to open up myself. You've got the knowledge to get there, and you will get there. If, if I did okay, you can do okay. You just got to really want it.